walking in the Spirit daily. Galatians 5.25 says, If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit as well. So how do we walk in the Spirit? Some people unwittingly or unknowingly allow every form of strife to take root in their hearts. You got from, from bitterness, malice, and anger to envy, hatred, and all forms of wickedness. But the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, verses 31 to 32, he admonishes that we put away these things and walk in love. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. But the question really is how do we consistently walk in love in a world that where there's so much hate? Galatians five sixteen gives us the answer. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you walk in the Spirit, you see and walk differently. Your perspective is different. And walking in love is natural to you. Being born again, you have the capacity to love even the most difficult or seemingly unlovable person. When you walk in the Spirit, the love of God emits from you profusely. You're kind-hearted and compassionate. You live beyond yourself and transcend the human level of selfishness and your own desires. When you walk in the Spirit, you go beyond. That is what I want, or this is how I like it. You think differently. The esteem, you, and esteem others better than yourself. That's in Ephesians, Philippians 2.3. 2, when you walk in the Spirit, you see with His eyes and think godly and loving thoughts towards others. There wouldn't be any iota of anger, selfishness, bitterness, or resentment manifested in or through you, through you. Those things just don't find a place in you. The words of Jesus in Matthew 5 verses 43 and 44 become your lifestyle. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So one of the things we must do is we must crucify the flesh. We do this through prayer, fasting, praise and worship. And a firm dedication to laying down our own personal desires. Especially the ones that are contrary to the word of God. It is a daily conscious choice to lay ourselves down and pick up our cross and follow him. Luke 9.23 says, And he was saying to them all, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross daily, willingly to endure whatever may come, and follow me. You must believe in him, conforming to his example of living and need be suffering, or perhaps dying because of faith in Him. Galatians 5.24 And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their sinful nature together with His passions and appetites. We've already did Galatians 5.16 But I say to you, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek Him and be responsive to His guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature which responds impulsively without regard for God or His precepts. I'm going to do a quick prayer here for this one. Lord, you said, if I wish to follow you as your disciple, I must deny myself, set aside selfish interests, and take up my cross daily, expressing the willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow you, believing in you, conforming to your example of living, and if need be, suffering perhaps dying because of faith in you, I choose to deny myself and take up my cross daily and follow after you. As according to Luke 9.23, I am called to walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek Him and be responsible, responsive to His guidance. And then I will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God or, or His precepts. For the sinful nature has its desires which is opposed to the spirit, and the desire of the spirit opposes the sinful nature. For those, for these two, the sinful nature and the spirit are in direct opposition to each other. 
continually in conflict so that I, as a believer, do not always do whatever good things I want to do. But what I am guided and led by the Holy Spirit, I am, I am not subject to the law. Now, the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sexuality, which is total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, righteous behavior, and other things like these. I have been... Um, warned that if we practice such things I will not inherit the kingdom of God but I choose to walk in the spirit and, and partake in the fruit of the spirit the result of his presence within me which is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law I belong to Christ Jesus and I crucify I choose to crucify the sinful nature together with his passions and appetites. I, l I claim to live by the Holy Spirit, and I must also walk by the Holy Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage. My conduct must be empowered by the Holy Spirit, according to Galatians 5, 16-25. Lord, search my heart. Show me any areas that are not pleasing to you. Show me areas where I am selfish, unkind, or anything that is not pleasing to you. I have been crucified with you. Lord, that is in you I have shared your crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but you who lives in me. The life I now live in the body I live by faith, by adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in you. Jesus, who loved me and gave yourself up for me. According to Galatians 2.20, we must be people of prayer. Again, if we want to be people of kingdom purpose, we need to pray. We cannot operate in kingdom purpose if we are not people of prayer first. Prayer is so much more than being a list of wants and needs to the Lord. He wants, he, he does want us to bring those things to him. But this is not the only thing we should be talking about to him. Prayer is a two-way conversation. We talk and then we also sit quietly and listen and hear what he wants to say. We should also be spending time with him in prayer, getting to know him better. We must learn to hear and recognize his voice. Prayer is our time to draw closer to him, learn from him, and for us to pour our hearts out to the one who loves us more than anyone else ever could. He wants to hear about our feelings, our joys, our struggles, our sadness, our victories. Times we messed up. Everything that is on our heart, He wants us to bring to Him. This is the time we can sit at His feet and soak in His presence. Don't let the cares of life or even doing work for Him distract you from taking the time to sit at His feet. This time is vital to our walk with Him. We must learn to be silent, to be still in His presence and wait on Him. Luke 10, verses 39-42 says, She had a sister named Mary, who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was continually listening to His, listening to his teachings. But Martha was very busy and distracted with all of the serving and responsibilities. And she approached Him, Jesus, and said, Lord, is it of no concern to you that my sister has left me to do the serving alone? Tell her to help me and do her part. But the Lord replied to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things. But only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, that which is to her advantage, which will not be taken away from her. John ten twenty seven says, "Lord, I am, we are, Lord, I am one of your sheep, and I will hear your voice and listen to you. You know me, and I follow you. Make pr these scriptures personal to you, Lord. 
I will spend time sitting at your feet. I will not get in a hurry, and I will not get distracted by the things of life. I will not get so busy with learning about you and doing for you that I neglect taking time to sit at your feet. I understand the importance of sitting aside time to sit at your feet and being in your presence, talking with you. Another way is through surrender and obedience. We must seek His will and His purpose and His plans, not ours. Jesus was our example. He is our example in all things. And He exemplified sur surrender to the Father. The Son of God was fully surrendered to God, and that shows us we must fully submit to Him in all our ways. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, our lives are no longer ours. We have been bought with a price. Jesus dying on the cross was that price. And now our lives belong to him. Mark 14 verses 35 and 36 says, After going a little farther, he fell to the ground, distressed by the weight of his spiritual burden, and began to pray that if it were possible, in the Father's will, the hour of suffering and death for the sins of mankind might pass from him. He was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup of judgment away from me. But not what I will, but what you will. Even in his darkest hour, he still sought to do the Lord's will, to do the Father's will. 1 Corinthians 6 Verses 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you, whom you have received as a gift from God, and that you are not your own property? You were bought with a price. You were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. So then honor and glorify God with your body. Romans 12, 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a dedication of all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Jesus, even you walked in total submission to the Father. I want to follow your example and walk in total submission. I say not my will, Lord, but yours. Not my way, Lord, but yours. Not my plan, Lord, but yours. My heart and life are yours. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is, who is within me, whom I have received as a gift from you, God. I am not my own property. I was bought with a price. I was actually purchased with your precious blood, Jesus. And I was made your own so that I will honor and glorify you with my body. Lord, I present my body. I'm dedicating all of myself, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to you, which is my rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Next is reading his word. I cannot stress enough the importance of reading his word. We must search out the truths of his word for ourselves. There is nothing wrong with getting teachings from ministers, but nothing can replace getting into the word for ourselves. 95% of our spiritual walk we do on our own. Only 5% is done in the church. We must line up everything we are taught with the Word of God. The only way we will know if we are being taught correctly from ministers is if we know the Word of God for ourselves. The Word of God is alive and active. It can offer help for every single situation we face. It is also where we learn who God is, who we are in Him, and how He feels about us. It is our lifeline, and it should be treated with that amount of importance. Hebrews 4, 12 For the sword, for the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. Matthew 4.4 4, But Jesus replied, It is written, and forever remains written, Man should not live by bread alone, 
but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Your word is living and active and full of power. It is sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating as far as the vision and soul and spirit. And both joints and marrow. Lord, I understand the power of your word and I will never take it lightly. Lord, you said it is written and forever remains written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the word of God. Thank you, Papa. We are to be imitators of him. We must seek to look and act more like him. We must learn to be selfless. Love like he loves, see others as he sees them, and have compassion like he has compassion. We should be praying daily to be more like him. Our prayer should always be to have less of us and more of him. We must also point to him in all we do and accomplish. Ephesians 5 1 Therefore, come, we become imitators of God. We need to copy him and follow his example as well as beloved children imitate their father. Papa, I will become an imitator of you. God, I will copy you and I follow your example and I will be a beloved child of yours. For as a believer, I have been called to follow the footsteps of Jesus and I will do my best to follow your example. 1 Peter 2.21 And we must increase in prominence. And we must decrease. John 3.30 I want more of you and less of me, Papa. Next, we have to put him first. If we say we live for God, then let us also walk in God. We walk in God by trusting in God. We focus not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are hoped for and believed in. We walk by faith and not by sight. We put no trust in our flesh, but nor the flesh of others. We trust in God's word and God's power to see us through all things. And all things, we must be first. He, he must be first. He will not accept second place in our lives if we really want to walk in his fullness. We must be the first things. He must be the first thing in all things. Matthew twenty seven thirty seven says, And Jesus replied to them, Him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Matthew 10, verses 37 to 39, He who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, which means believing in me, and conforming to my example, and living, and if need be suffering or perhaps dying, is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life in this world will eventually lose it through death. And whoever loses his life in this world my sake, for my sake will find it. That is life with me for all eternity. Lord, I want to walk, live, and follow you daily. I walk I want to walk in the Holy Spirit daily. I know your order to do that. I must do I must do the following. Jesus, you said you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind mind. I put you first in everything, and I will never allow anything or anyone to take your place in my heart or life. Anyone who loves a father and mother more than you is not worthy of you. And anyone who loves their son or daughter more than you is not worthy of you. Anyone who does not take up their cross and follow you is not worthy of you. Whoever finds their life in you in this world will lose it. Next, we are to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You fathers at the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus and his place to represent him and act on his behalf. He will teach me all things. And he will help me remember everything that Jesus has told him. I seek your guidance, teachings, truth, and correction, Holy Spirit. I welcome you into my life daily to have your way. The Spirit of Truth guides me into the truth. That's in John sixteen thirteen. Full and complete truth. You do not speak on your own initiative, but
but you speak whatever you hear from the Father, the message regarding the Son, and if you disclose to me what it is to come in the future. First Thessalonians 5.19 says, I will be careful to avoid quenching and grieving you, Holy Spirit, at all times. I will not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to your working and guidance. I will not rebel and grieve his Holy Spirit, causing him to change into the enemy, my enemy, and cause him to fight against me. Lord, I never want to be a stiff-necked or stubborn person. I do not want to be uncircumcised in heart or ears. I never want to be actively, I never want to actively resist you. Holy Spirit. Next is we need to be selfless and not selfish. I will not do anything from selfishness or empty, empty conceit to factional motives or strife, but I will live with an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous. I will regard others as more important than myself. I will not merely look out for my own personal interests, but I will always consider the interests of others. Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. Lord, help me to always put others first and never get so caught up in my own life that, that I neglect seeing the needs of others. Lord, I understand in the last days, dangerous, last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear, for people will be lovers of self, they'll be narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, Prof they'll be boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, devoid of self-control, brutal haters of good, Traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godlessness, godliness, although they have denied his power. I will avoid such people and keep far away from them. Spirit, please keep me guarded with deception from deception, and please help me to never fall into these sins. Please help me to always operate in humility and with a servant's heart. Next, we need to be repentant and have a new heart. You gave me a new heart and put a new spirit within me, and you removed the heart of stone from my flesh and gave me a heart of flesh. Lord, help me to always keep hardness out of my heart because I never want to return to living with a dead, cold, stone heart. Lord, help me to never fall into willful ignorance and spiritual blindness that leads to hardness and insensitivity of heart. Keep my heart focused on you. If I freely admit that I have sinned and confess my sins, you are faithful and just and will forgive my sins and cleanse me continually from all unrighteousness. Amen, Papa.